Good morning all. It's Muppet time, Muppet 2. This is my Muppet 2 breadboard, which um, I've modified slightly. I've put these little stickers on because uh, some people said we can't quite work out which posts are connected together. Well, it was pretty straightforward. It was the ones that are closestly spaced, if there's a word closestly. And you can see that the close spaced terminals are wired together. The far apart ones are not, but I've put these little markers on there anyway. Now, up to now in the Muppet 2 project, I've been working on uh, buck circuits, which have a switch here, which have a diode here and an inductor there. And I've not really had anything on this side of the circuit, watt meter there at times. But now I'm going to switch to doing boost circuits where we're going to try and boost the voltage on the output so that it's higher than the voltage on the input. Let's print out the boost circuit from Wikipedia. Here we are, Wikipedia. It's the boost converter and I'm going to cut that picture out. And uh, this is the genius of the Muppet 2 breadboard because there's the buck converter circuit. And now let me put the boost converter circuit there and we can see that what we need is the supply coming directly into the inductor. So there's not going to be much going on on this side of the uh, breadboard. And then we need a MOSFET switch here from positive to ground. And then we need a diode running across there. Now this is interesting, MOSFET switch from positive here to ground. What if I switch this switch on 100% of the time? We're going to short out the power supply through the inductor. That's not a good thing. Right, let's fit the diode. That's going to go here. So I'm going to use this Schottky diode 90SQ035. This one is, is that going to fit in there? Yes, that fits in there quite nicely oh, it's a bit lopsided anyway that's pretty good um now i need the mosfet here here is my mosfet all made up with the nice uh muppet 2 breadboard style connectors on it uh oh now which way does it go does it go that way or does it go that way well here's the symbol for an n channel mosfet and it needs to go this way with the drain at the top because if we turned it around that way the body diode would simply allow current to flow uh, from positive to negative at all times and we wouldn't actually be able to switch this circuit so we need to put the diode reverse bias so that it doesn't conduct and then whenever we switch on the N channel of the MOSFET yeah we pull briefly uh, this point down to ground but only briefly we're only trying to get current to build up in the inductor. We don't want it to saturate and then have a vast current flow. Remember, current in an inductor rises up gradually. We don't want a huge current flowing down to ground because we'll just burn everything out. So uh, here we are. We've got drain. That's the tab. I had the tab sort of leaning towards the drain connection just kind of to make it a bit easier for me to remember how to do this. So in goes the MOSFET there so that's the switching device that's going to switch briefly uh, this point here to ground that allows current to build up in the inductor then when we switch off the mosfet the magnetic field collapses and we get a back emf and this point here will shoot up above the incoming voltage shoot up i'll go through the diode and that will go into the load which is this five watt festoon car light bulb uh yeah that should work right i've attached a power supply here so let's put some power onto that and switch on now of course nothing happens because i've got a gap here this is where the mosfet switch for the buck converter went and the diode went up and down there now we don't need the diode here uh, it wouldn't matter if it was in there, it just wouldn't do anything. Now, if I uh, connect this up, you can see that the light bulb has lit up. And that's because the boost converter has, even without switching this MOSFET on, and you can see that I haven't switched it on because gate and source 
are connected together with a small DuPont wire. Um, even without switching that MOSFET on, there's a current path through the inductor, through the diode, and into the light bulb. So we can't have the light bulb off with this boost converter unless I pull this wire out. Um, when we start switching this MOSFET, we expect the voltage on the light bulb to go up, but it can never be less than the incoming power supply voltage, which is mm, 12 volts. Right, now we need something to switch the MOSFET on and off. So I'm gonna use Arduino Nano with the Uno bootloader. I think someone said that the uh, Nano has the Uno bootloader in it now or at least the, the small bootloader. Anyway, uh, potentiometer, so I can vary the pulse width of the PWM signal. The PWM signal has been sped up uh, to about 15 kilohertz. This is my dual uh, opto-isolator MOSFET driver. It's very good because you've got two little LEDs. You can see what's going on. And we've got two wires to go to the MOSFET. So let's hook this up. Right, I'm connecting my wires to the high side of my two optos. Um, purple is most positive. Blue is connected to the midpoint, so that can go to positive, which will mean no potential across these wires if this upper opto isolator is on, which means the MOSFET will be switched off. If the lower opto isolator comes on, the blue will be pulled down to battery, nine volt battery on here. Uh, negative and therefore it'll put the full nine volts across the MOSFET switching it on so purple needs to be the most positive side of the MOSFET I've got to be careful here because I don't want the MOSFET to turn on let's turn this power supply off I have current limited this let's check the current limit it's 12 volts oh that's off uh, one amp I've currently limited it to one amp load save 12 volts okay so let's turn that off I'll now connect up the uh, drive wires to the MOSFET gate and source. Now, because I don't want an accident here, I don't want this MOSFET going on 100%, shorting out power supply through the inductor. That would be bad. Uh, I mean, one bad thing that could happen is the inductor could heat up and all the enamel could burn off the wires. We don't want that. So I'll put polyfuses. All along the bottom here, where I could have just put wire links, I've put polyfuses. There's one there, one there, one there. They say uh, 075 on them. I don't know what that means. Is it 750 milliamps? Now, the second thing I've done is I've constrained the output of this potty uh, potentiometer so that it can't, or at least the, the red value, can't go over the midpoint. I can turn the pot beyond the midpoint but the um, software won't take a value greater than uh, the midpoint of the pot. So I can only vary the MOSFET between 0 and 50%. I can't get anywhere near 100%. And that's another safeguard to make sure that nothing goes wrong. Uh, we need to take a look at the Arduino software, the software that's in there. Right, this is the Arduino software. Um, it's only six lines, four in the setup, two in the loop. I've commented out the ones that I'm not really using here because I'm not really using the second potentiometer. Well, I'm not using it. So just this pot one line and uh, right to OCR 1A. There's the constraint. I've constrained it to uh, FF. It will actually read up to uh, 1 FF, but that stops it going over 50% mark space ratio right let's give it a try right power supply uh, on on uh, why hasn't my lamp come on that's probably not good actually that was in constant current limit so oh I haven't got my um, I haven't got my Arduino powered up so let's do that so that MOSFET was probably on a hundred percent it's not warm or anything so that's fine let's power that up and we're looking for um, pulse width modulation on here. Let's just make sure that's going to work. Yeah, so I turn the pot and this top LED is on. You can't see that very well. Let me get something to block the, sh the uh, light. Right, we can see that the top LED is on. That should mean the MOSFET is getting zero volts. So this is off 
and I can vary it with the pot. Now notice that if I take the pot up to halfway, we get equal values on these two LEDs, but beyond that, it doesn't go beyond that because of my constraint. I'm gonna take this um, buck converter piece of paper out because it's got nothing really to do with this. This is just simply boost converter. Right, let's wind that back, switch on the power supply, the lamp comes on. I'm going to show current, so you can see 0.3 amps, so 300 milliamps going into this lamp. Let's see if we can, uh, by putting small pulses of closing this switch, let's see if we can uh, raise the brightness of that light. Here we go. Oh, yes. I'm just going to lock the exposure because I don't want the camera... Um, varying as it goes. So yeah, there you can see that as I turn that up, the lamp gets brighter. We are boosting the voltage on the output. Uh, the voltage on the output must be getting higher because we've got a relatively fixed resistance here in the light bulb. Uh, you can see that the current is, oh, shoots right up to an amp. That's interesting, but yeah, the voltage on the out, uh, the uh, light bulb must be getting higher when we're boosting. Fantastic, that works. Right, I've raised the current limit a little bit because I could see that the constant current uh, LED was coming on the middle one there, the yellow one, uh, up to 1.2 amps. So as I boost the voltage on the output to get more power in the light bulb, we're actually going up to uh, 1.1 amps. I set it to current limit at 1.2, but of course this is chopping the signal. Let me just see if that's getting hot. Oh, it's getting warm. Oh, actually that's quite warm. Yeah, that's uh, fairly warm. Um, yeah, we've got a very choppy. This is um, switching this switch up to 50% pulse width modulation at about 15 kilohertz. So it's not surprising that this thing's getting a bit confused, but yeah, that's taking it well beyond oh that polyfuse is oh that's hot that's very hot in fact it's possible that these polyfuses are getting very close to the point of opening are these all hot no that one isn't of course uh but this one is yeah and this one is um but yeah that boosts doesn't it should we look at power there it is power 3.95 watts uh this is nominally a 5 watt bulb let's raise that up Oh, we can take that up right up to 12 watts. These bulbs are very resilient. Uh, yeah, 12 watts through a 5 watt bulb. But yeah, I can boost by switching on and off this MOSFET. The voltage on the output and the light gets brighter. It works. And that's all I'm going to do today. So, cheerio.